Hey, uh, just to let you know on Wednesday, um, the, the class, I will be um, in the discussion hour. Sorry, Wednesday discussion hour, I will dedicate it to the homework assignment number three, just to let you know. Um, and also, uh, you can ask homework one and two today and Wednesday as well. Um, so I actually, I released the code for our discussion today. Um, I tried to make it, um, how do I say that? Um, as clear as possible, but I realized there was one thing I missed is that I didn't tell you where to uh, install the JSON um, RPC CPP, which is if you're using a Mac, you can actually follow the first link Put it here. I, I will update the, the GitHub. Maybe, maybe update the GitHub now because this is a new make file. And then this is the general uh, lib JSON RPC CPP. How do you do this uh, JSON RPC in the C++ uh, format? Let me actually upload this, this file so you can actually get the two links. Okay, here is my... Where is my, um, okay, good. Okay, so I want to make file. No, I make a mistake, sorry. Wait a minute, how do I update? Is there a way I can? Add another file. Add file right here, right? Okay. Upload file. Yeah. No problem. Uh, let me. No, I just I just do a drag. I have a window here. I thought I had a window here. I close it because I was actually open that window. That's okay. I should be able to get it really fast. Thank you. Uh, okay, fall 2020, programming class. Make file is this one I'm looking for. Okay, so that should do it. Okay, can we change this? Yeah, it has been updated. All right, good, I'm happy. Okay, that's the make file that uh, we're going to spend time to go over this folder. Um, um, I, I feel that last time I start talk about, uh, started to talking about concept, but uh, you really learn until you uh, see how it is being implemented in a real program and also uh, when you actually got a chance to try it out yourself. Okay, so let me quickly tell you what we try to do. What we try to do is, is this, that we really have a object called IoT thing. This is a real object. It's actually somewhere in the internet in certain time at certain space. So far, we only talk about access this object via internet address, but later you can actually change that such that it's also accessed by certain time, limited time window or even uh, limited uh, geographic location because time, space, and internet address, it basically covers a lot of things about how we can access to that. And this is our client, meaning that it's your smartphone. You don't have direct access to that object, but you would like to. And the thing is that from the programmer perspective, there are two separate issues they need to worry about. Number one issue is where is my target object I try to access? That's one issue is about search, is about location of that particular object. But the other objective of the programmer 
is that I want to actually interact the object regardless where it is, but I focus on the interface, focus on what kind of functionality I want to do with that object. So if you think about computer programming, we just keep trying to separate the things because the thing is that if we can, the, the more we can separate this kind of functionally different perspective, the chance for the programmer to be able to write high quality software is actually supposed to be high because the people, uh, instead of dealing with both the search process or dealing with the logic of the algorithm, and if they actually be able to consider focus on only one, then apparently we have a better chance to be uh, deliver uh, some 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 uh, program with less number of bugs. Okay, so the thing is that the, the concept of the uh, distributed object or shallow object is try to provide that separation and such that the local programmer will only need to worry about one thing. So let me actually show you how the program, let me first show you how the program looks like, and then we can actually gradually um, um, dive into that. Okay. So by the way, this the make file is given to you, and the make file sometimes um, teach us how the program are being uh, organized, uh, compiling together. Okay, so, so this make file uh, itself is a little bit more sophisticated than the make file you had before. But let me just go over this very quickly. So uh, it, it, it's, it's just some um, something which is, um, when you have more program, you have to do this. Number one that we have is the linking, the library. Obviously, because we're gonna use not just the JSON, C++ library, we're going to use a lot of uh, what we call JSON RPC CPP library. And therefore, but because J, uh, JSON RPC is really what we call a web sense program, it's actually web. The, the way I interact with the object remote is the same as I interact with a web page in the Google or in any, any web server. And therefore you can see that I have the, the, the whole package is a micro HTTPD. It's basically um, the, the web server is being wrapped around into the library, micro uh, HTTPD. You have JSON CPP common, JSON CPP server, JSON CPP client, there are three part. And then you have what we call CURL. CURL, I mentioned the term URL, universal resource locator, is help you to find out it's essentially the HTTP link, that's that's the what we call URL. And C URL curl means that, how do you actually do programming of URL in C or C++? So that's a library called minus L curl. So that's why um, it's very useful when you do uh, web programming, which is essentially today, uh, I would say um, um, the majority of programming is actually um, web programming, and you need to include all the, all the uh, library. And then in order to control the size of the make file, you can see that initially we just worry about person and thing. Right now we have an IDOT thing, we have a shadow thing, we have a JV time network and GPS. So I just define a macro called, uh, this is called include basic. And then I have a include for all the classes. That's why I can see on this for CL. And then I basically define all the object file together. It make the following program looks nicer. Let me actually tell you what happened. What, what, I mean, what do I mean by that? For example, when I want to compile HW4 server, HW4 client, um, essentially you can see is, is this part the same. I, I include HW4 server, but then I include all the object file. I just include it and then include all the LD flags. So, you, so instead of writing a whole string of all the library, all the object code, I just include this two macro and those two macro is actually being defined over here above in the make file. So that, that's actually make the, the, um, um, the, the make file looks uh, uh, cleaner and is uh, again, is uh, not so easy to make a mistake. Okay, all right. so. I want to show you this program. First, I want to show you the client, hw4 client.cpp. 
It's probably it's very simple. See, it's only probably 10, 11 lines of code. Very simple. What this program is doing is this. Think about the real function is only two lines. It's really only two lines. So the first line is, uh, I, I define something called shadow thing. Shadow thing, and what it is, it actually take a three parameter, which I will talk about that. The first parameter is a URL. And the second parameter is the uh, class ID. And the third parameter is object ID. So if I know the URL, class ID, and object ID, that's enough for my shadow because then that's actually helped me have enough information to actually be able to know where it is. I only know, by the way, this line only say where it is, but it doesn't say anything about why it is. What do I want to do with it? I don't even know it's, it's an IoT thing or it's a other kind of thing, but I know it's this shadow thing is designed to handle thing. Okay, and then I just call, I mean, I make the, the most, uh, um, uh, um, simple example, dump to JSON. I just basically want to dump what object is. Okay, so that's that's uh, uh, ST1, which is a shadow thing. I call that function dump to JSON, and that's it. Okay. Um, all right, now let's, let's actually try to run it, see what happened. So, in order to run it, I have to run the server part, which I haven't shown you the server part yet. So let me actually run it this way. So I have to run the server part first. What's going on? Where's uh, my server? Okay. I have to make first. Okay. I forgot I cleaned up before I... Uh... Okay, you can see it's generated, and so I'm going to run. Okay, I'm actually running uh, server par. It's already running. In this program, I actually create an IoT thing, I which I will show you later. Now I'm actually going to the client side. You can see the client side is very simple, just one line of code. So I do HW4 uh, client. I call that down to JSON and then look at the JSON is re returned back to me. Let's actually look at the JSON. So essentially it has this, this is IOT thing, has a IP address. Just, just this is the same program I uh, distributed in October 10th, so 2022. And it has a location, has the uh, whatever, it's a Swedish meeple by the way. So I don't know it's a Swedish meeple, but if you remember, uh, the this is actually the Swedish meatball we talk about, and you can see that okay, Felix is the Swedish meatball. He got it from IKEA. That's the uh, location. I purchased okay because I run the server just now, so it actually shows as uh, October twenty fourth. Just got it with the sequence number. So status is successful. Okay, so you can see that my client program doesn't have any of the information. So essentially the Swedish meatball is on the server side. So I just make that call and then to grab it. Okay, so that, that's what we want to do uh, in, the, in the shadow object. And we looks like this. By the way, the, the URL I present, I don't want to get to the trouble of a VPN to access my server on Cyrus. So I just use 127.0.0.1, which represent a local host. So it's actually here. Yeah, question please. Can you say a little bit louder? Uh, oh, um, if you actually go to the make file right now, it should be included. I just upload the, the GitHub. So you go to the GitHub link, you should be able to see. I just upload it. Yeah. I just updated. it. But thank you for letting uh, me know if it's not. Um... Okay. Okay, so in order to do this, we're using a concept called remote procedure call, called RPC. Um, essentially, it take a file and it will run this program called JSON RPC stuff. And it generate the client side, it generate the server side, 
and then we actually have to write extra code and link, they will, they will compile very nicely. So let me actually show you a little bit on the server side right now. So the, the main piece of the server side is hrv 4 servercpp Okay, at the beginning is just some of the header file. And I'm going to skip this part first because this part is essentially the code that's generated by JSON RPC stuff. I have to copy over here. And then I'm actually going to tell you the main function. So here is the main function. This code looks very should looks very familiar to you. If you look at this code, this code is directly copied from the um the the code I share, the make the, the main program. Uh, share on October 10th, uh, 2022. So you can see that I create a bunch of GPS objects, I create a Felix object, I create a MIPL IP address, and I create an IoT thing called Swedish MIPL. Okay, I create a Swedish MIPL, and I basically just do the same thing, I fill up. Okay, this slide I will explain later. I actually have to put the pointer of Swedish MIPL. Uh, to a space so I can actually let my RPC be able to access to that as a global variable. So I will I will explain to you how I did this part, the thing uh, underscore PTR as a pointer. But now is a is the trick. So before this line, what I did is just do what I normally do in a program when I'm actually running in the same program. So after that, I'm just set up my HTTP protocol. So essentially the server, you can think about that is an HTTP server. It's a web server. It's receiving requests via URL. So I can actually process that. So this piece of code is, I, I, in fact, I hardly ever change this part of code. It's just, just the code for doing uh, the micro HTTP server. So I basically run the server with a poor number 8384. Okay, this is the poor number. You can choose anything you like, but I choose 8384. If I want my client server to talk to each other, this two number, this number must match. So let me show you what I did. You probably missed this part when I first time show you. If you look at the code here, my URL, when I create a shadow object is 127.0.0.1 colon. You see there's a poor number. So when we contact a service on the internet, not just you provide IP address, IP address will only get to the host, but within the host, which program is receiving that incoming request is differentiated by that poor number. That's what we call poor number. Sometimes you call IP address and poor number. So now you know what the poor number is. So, so essentially poor number is something, if you want to have a two program to communicate, that you have to actually agree on one particular port number. So in this case, I actually decide that this server receive uh, port number 8384 and whatever port number you want to choose, as long as you don't conflict with other port number. You can imagine the port number within the same host must be unique to a program. If somebody already have 8384 and then you actually try to have another program receiving 8384, um, there are two things that might happen. First, you will not be able to receive anything or you have a conflict of ports, okay? So uh, most like to happen is that uh, this happens so many times when I want to develop the web programming is that I say, why my program cannot receive the request from the client? Guess what? I forgot to kill my previous running instance of the same program. I forgot to kill it. And therefore that port already open and that old version of the software grabbed the port and such that my updated bug free version cannot get the packet because it's actually going to that as a first place. And I, immediately when I control C or kill uh, that process, then my program starts to work. Okay, so that's the port number. All right, so this you just set up, 
the server, which is receiving 8384. And then you essentially create an instant or object called my homework for server. This I will explain later. That part is the part that's actually being generated by JSON RPC. So why do I need that? Because I have to have that in order to fulfill the JSON RPC protocol. So essentially, I create when I create the instant S, which is the JSON RPC server, is actually leveraging that HTTP server. So now I have the HTTP part, and then I just say the protocol I'm doing is JSON RPC server uh, R1, R2, V1, V2. In fact, that's that's to me is is a good information there. But most of the case, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So yeah. So the difference between uh, JSON RPC and Google RPC is that if I use Google's RPC and then I try to read the data, it's all in binary. Yes. Okay, but I would have a way of converting the binary into sure, sure. You can I, but 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 you have to do uh on the network is everything is binary. So with with binary. JSON RPC on the network, everything is JSON. Yeah. So that's why Google's uh, Faster, yeah, more compact and faster. They, they, Google did a few things. Not, not just that. That's just one of them. Google did a few uh, performance enhancement, but the concept the same. It's just the performance they're getting better. Yeah, if you want to write really uh, high performance uh, computing, that probably gRPC is better. Yeah, but to learn, probably JSON RPC is easier. Yeah. Okay. So after I done set up the server, so look at this, I just basically start listening. When I do listening, then essentially you give the control to the JSON RPC server, and it will actually route it to the S, the, the uh, HMV4 server, which I will show you uh, a bit later. And then you can actually see that. Um, so in fact, if you, when you start to do this, it's, it's fine. I mean, this one, I don't think it ever reached here. Unless you could go see or something, you'll get to this point. Okay, but the, as long as you start listening, um, it's actually uh, going to um, run the program. Okay, so now let's see, how does it run the program? The, the part that's generated, let me actually tell you, this is the function. Remember that this program, uh, I, I said here earlier, I have a class which is my HW4 server. It's actually inheritance from another server called HW4 server. So let me actually tell you that the code for this parent class was generated by the JSON RPC stuff program. And I had to create another class which just inherit that class, but otherwise everything is the same. Let me actually compare this to you so you know what I'm talking about. So I'm actually compare HW for server.h. So just like you know, HW for server.h as a specified, it was generated. We're not supposed to modify anything. It's just generated. The code is generated. And in the code, it only generate a class called HW for server. And it's basically inherited from some abstract server, it doesn't matter. But you can look at inside this function has a constructor, which is HW4 server that's matching to this one. This one is the constructor. This one is constructor with two parameter. And then the other one, you, you skip the inline, don't worry about that, Just, but look at this part. This is called virtual dump to JSON. Virtual, so then I have exactly the same thing. Virtual uh, JSON value dump to JSON. So these two parts are exactly the same. The parameter, everything, there is a tiny difference. Um, the, the concept called pure virtual function, which I will explain to you later after you're familiar with JSON RPC framework. But right now I think it's, is distracting, so I don't want to get to that. So, so you can see that this code, I wrote this piece of code is essentially the, the definition of the class is exactly the same as the one I just generated. Okay, and then in the, in the uh, constructor, 
I actually don't have to do anything because the, the parent class already did everything. I just adding a statement, uh, just to show you that this got called, but even this statement is actually optional. I mean, in real program, you probably don't need to add that. But the only thing I have, just let you know, remember I tell you this thing called thing pointer. I actually declare global variable called thing star, thing pointer. I declare it here above this function. So the only function that's interesting is actually this function called dump to JSON. By the way, here is dump to JSON, but any member function, operator equal, equal, or get distance, you can actually create a function if you update the, um, the, the, uh, the RPC spec file, it will generate different function. But because in this spec file, just show you that, if you look at the ECF 36B homework four dot JSON, it's only have a one function. Last time I show you had multiple function. This one, for this class, uh, I, I want to just simplify. So I only keep one function, which is dump to JSON. Okay, so, so I make it only one function call. So we can focus on how that function call uh, works exactly. Okay, so now the, the tricky part is, how does this function get called and how does it handle that? So, so let me actually tell you that how this function get called. As long as this program start to say, uh, star listen, remember? You start listening at 18 to 84. So if there is a client is a sending a request for this particular poor number, for this particular function dump to JSON, then essentially this program will get called. So this concept is important. I want to repeat it for those of you who have never done web programming, is that this program, remember at the button, it says star listening. When it says star listening, it's not just listening, but also saying that what function I'm expecting. In this program right now, the poor I will receive is 80 to 84. And the only function I will receive the incoming request is dumped to JSON. So if you want to call get distance to this program, it will be error because I don't have that function here and it will be rejected. But if you call dump JSON, dump to JSON, then this program will get called. Okay, so now let's look at this, this piece of program. It's not a huge number of lines. You can see that it's pretty, pretty short. So let's see how I implement the server side. Yeah. Okay, so this say. I'm running out of course and I want to use one for for multiple programs. Could say I run my programs. I have a massive program which runs all the other programs. And I would use this a dictionary to map programs with their location. So if you say, oh, I'm on this class, this function, I go into the dictionary, I'm like, okay, what is the address and memory for that program? And this gives you with that. You, can, do that. you can certainly do that. So the poor is just allow me to connect to that master program, whatever. And then uh, whatever master decide how to distribute, they're not looking at poor number, they're looking at class ID and other JSON type of information. That's that's perfectly okay. Now, in fact, that, that's the way people do it, is, is just get the port, get to that program. And within that program, how do you distribute? That's actually your choice, yeah. Okay. So look at here, what I did, I, I, what I did is a little bit hack. I want to make it really simple because when I wrote the program, I'm expecting that the client is actually looking for a thing and the uh, object ID is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I kind of hard coded in a way to say when I receive it, I have a three parameter. Okay, the first one is action. The second parameter is called arguments, which I usually neglect that, but that, then I have a three argument, which is a class ID, host URL, and object ID with, with that order. So I just check whether the class ID is equal to thing, the object ID is equal to this. If it's neither, if either of them uh, doesn't match, I will just declare the result is uh, failure. It's a failed, and then uh, I give the reason, and then I create this result JSON. Okay, that's actually if it doesn't match. Look at this, if it match, it's very simple. 
I just call thin pointer dump to JSON. And the return of the JSON will directly go to the result and then I add the status. So now I want to go a little bit to what, what is that thin pointer? So what is a thin pointer? Thin pointer is defined as a pointer to a thing object. And then under here, how do I actually set the thing? I actually set the address to the Swedish midball and Swedish midball is a IOT thing. And I cast it into a thing and then put that address to that thin pointer. So essentially when I say thin pointer to the thumb to JSON, I'm really calling the Swedish midball because it was defined as a virtual function. Okay, so, so you can see virtual function is kind of nice at this time is because no matter how I cast, I will be able to get to that. And, and virtual function, the other thing, nice thing about virtual function is that later I will show you how to twist your, your uh, client program that sometimes I cannot even tell whether this is a shadow thing or the real thing or it's a IoT thing because I could have a multiple one locally. I remember, I don't want the programmer to track which one it is. I want the programmer's life to be as simple as possible. And then they, they can actually just, just worry about the logic. So you can see that I just provide this Swedish mobile address to that thing pointer. And then on top of this, I basically just call thing pointer to the dump to JSON return and I reply that and that's it. Okay, that's how this, you can see that I almost split the program, the, the program I had on October 10th. Part of that, I give it to server. Part of that, I give it to client. And then that's it. Okay. Any question before I start show you even more detail? Is it at this level, everything is okay? All right. Play yourself the, the code. Okay. So now I want to start, go back to the client again. I like this exercise by uh, just trace the code line by line to see what happened. Okay, so now I'm going back to here, shadow thing. So ST1 is a shadow object. So I'm actually going to call this function called dump to JSON. Can someone tell me where do you expect to find the source code for this dump to JSON? Where do you think it will it, it should have? Let me actually show you all the code I have. Which file do you think contain that particular piece of code? From all the file here. Yeah. Exactly. Shallow thing dot cpp, right? So let's actually take a look at shallow thing dot h first. So you can see shallow the thing that h is basically inherit from thing. And it has this three argument because I need this to for me to connect the remote. That's why I have a host URL, class ID, object ID. Otherwise it's the same. It has a constructor, it has this function, right? This is a virtual function down to JSON. So that's actually where's the implementation? You're exactly right. That's in shadow thing that CPP. Let's take a look at shadow thing.cpp. Okay, here's the shadow thing.cpp. Um, because we're getting into JSON RPC, in order for you to actually connect, by the way, shadow thing.cpp has a very tight relationship with a code generator called hw4client.h. hw4client.h was generated. We're actually going to that. And it, you need to include the HTTP client.h because remember, on the server side is actually uh, the micro HTTPD. On the client side, I actually need to call that. That's why I have to include the, the, um, the HTTP client code. Okay, but this part is simple. This part is just a, a constructor. It has the three parameters set up. There's nothing fancy, but the interesting part is this dump to JSON. Okay, so let's take a look at dump to JSON. 
Um, it's a remember I said it's a HTTP client. So the first thing I actually have to create the HTTP client, and then I actually have to create a client almost like the server side. I have two steps. The first step just create the client. The second step I actually need to create this object to use the H HW4 client. And the first one I actually use host URL. So that's actually equivalent to 127.0.0.1 colon 83.84. So the, the URL and the port number are being configured into the client. So the client know, okay, that's where my uh, need to contact the server. All right. So those two are just trying to set up with the JSON RPC. And then I just want to tell you that my V is the one I actually get the result back. Okay. So now I'm going to call this function and then look at this. This is what I call the JSON RPC client on this line. Here I'm really calling it. There is a function called thumb to JSON. That's the RPC call. There's a different call. This call is a virtual function call for shadow uh, thing. But this one is really the RPC call. Try to call the client side. All right. So we'll, we'll see this part uh, later. But, but essentially what we did is we basically configured their input. Uh, by the way, the program when I want to send this, uh, it has a, let me see, where's the P? Go down a little bit. That's interesting. I I probably forget to clean up. This side is actually probably you don't need even need to do, use this this four lines of code. You don't need to change. That was that was actually sorry about that. That part of the code, I actually uh, uh, forgot to delete. That was an illustration from my the other. Let me actually try it. If I get rid of this four line, if I get rid of this four line, make. And then server is still running. Yeah, server is still running. Good. So I'm just running the client. Yeah, still working. Okay. So sorry, that four lines of code is not necessary. Oh, make the things even. That's why I thought it's very simple. Why I have so many lines. Okay. So you can see that after I create the client, I just basically fill in the parameter. Like you remember, this is actually the same as the receiving end. Is exactly the order with the action parameter. I just say anything you prefer, which means that is useless. Okay. I just historically I left it there, but I, I guess I can probably remove it. And then you have a class ID, host URL, object ID. After you call that, you get a my V and then you print it out. That's the output. So you can see the client side is not that bad, right? It's just just basically calling it and get, get it there. Okay, so now I want to go deep into that. Where is the implementation of this down to JSON? That's in client 4.h, which I hope you can spend some time to take a look because I think you learned a lot about um, C++ by looking at the code that was generated by really, really good professional C++ programmer. So they know how the code they want to establish, okay? So look at what they did. They create a class called HW4 client, which they actually inherit from JSON RPC client. And then they have a constructor, HW4 client. And then this part, they actually implement a function called dump to JSON. This is a dump to JSON. We actually, it's, it was generated. And it has this parameter. And you see, I, I actually copied this piece of code over there to the, the other file. That's why I, I remember I talked about the class and uh, I forgot to remove it. I basically include this to let people see. So essentially what it is, is that using JSON programming, they basically encode the action argument class ID, host URL, object ID into a JSON format. And then they just say this, call Mesa with this function and with this P. When you call this call Mesa, it's going to be delivered to the server side. And the server side will get it and then uh, we'll be able to handle it. Okay, so that's, that's essentially how it works. So 
Okay, so once you call the client, then let's actually look at HW4 server.h. That's the code is generated. And what happened is that it has a function called bind. When you have a constructor, it basically bind this method. Constructor bind this method called dump to JSON. So once that, that binding is done, then when the client make that call, it is going to be invoke the whatever virtual function being implemented by dump to JSON, which was the code you're going to implement in HW4 server. So just to let you know, in the virtual function definition, if you see a at the end, it says equal to zero, that means that particular virtual function is called pure virtual function. So the difference between virtual function and pure virtual function is that a virtual function in any level of the class hierarchy, you can actually provide implementation. But anyway, the, the, the version that is going to invoke will depending on which class that that object was uh, created. But if something is called pure virtual function, that means you should never have an implementation at this level. This is a pure abstraction. That's why it's called pure virtual function. It's a pure virtual, and uh, don't worry about that, which means that we as programmer, we have to provide an implementation. Uh, that's why in the, in the HW4 server.cpp, We actually need to, you see this part, this part when we actually declare this, um, we don't have that might equal to zero. That means we're actually going to provide implementation at this level, okay? All right, let me just go back to the slide. To tell you what I just show you from the slide perspective. So number one, this is my class hierarchy. I have a thing, I have a shallow thing, I have an IoT thing. And the server part is really where the thing and IoT, you could be thing, could be IoT thing, I don't care. But it has the function I really want. I put it there. And the client side, I actually using the shallow thing to do that. Okay, that's actually the, and in terms of compilation, the code you actually got, you probably got all the, uh, the the basic class. Like I only list three class here, person, thing, IoT thing. And uh, you have your code, HW4 server, HW4 client, shadow thing, shadow uh, uh, object, and make file. And the most important thing is there is this called RPC spec file, which describes that function. You're going to let the client and server communicate. And this program, if you run the make file, you run the RPC gen pro RPC stop program, it will actually generate this two file, HW4 server.h, HW4 client.h. And using all this file together, you can generate this client and the server. Okay, I have about five minutes. I'm gonna play some trick. Okay, this is a basic one. You should uh, really try to install uh, JSON RPC CPP under your platform. Um, and then try to see how that works, okay? It's not, not that complicated uh, in terms of number and line of code. But I want to actually show you this. So I'm going to hw4 client.h, client.cpp, sorry. So over here, it's very simple. I only got one object called shadow thing. But let me actually try to make it more complicated here. I'm going to borrow a few lines from the program here. I'm going to still have this. Yeah, this is good enough. So this is the first object. 
I'm going to create a second object. Okay, so what I'm going to create, I mean, this is GPS is my uh, person. I will call that uh, uh, John. And let me just make this person John and make a zero. I mean, let me just assuming they're the same, uh, the same location. Okay, let's make it easier. And then uh, I have IP address, meatball. I, I will call it Irish meatball this time. Is there something called Irish meatball? I know there's Irish coffee. I'm not sure Irish meatball. Irish coffee, uh, yeah, meatball IP address, fine. I'm okay about that. Okay, let me actually just copy and paste. Irish coffee. Yeah, I mean, I hope I don't, you know, Irish people probably hate me when I want to do this kind of thing. Okay, that's fine. So over here, I have two objects. One is remote, one is local. this to John. Okay, so now I'm actually going to start to do the result, right? So let me do this. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is create a pointer. The pointer is thing star thing ptr. Okay, I create a pointer. And then what I did, is this. I'm going to say result is equal to thing pointer. Okay, if I write the code looks like this. Which one do you think the thin pointer when I call dump j, dump to JSON is going to uh, invoke at this time? Which one? Is that the Irish coffee or Swedish nibble? If I write the code this way, the answer is neither, right? Because I haven't set the pointer, but I can set the pointer this way. I can say this pointer is equal to, I'm going to do casting thing star of what? And Irish coffee. If I do this, then this one is actually going to call the coffee. But if I do this, if I actually just change this, this I change to ST1, right? I say MST1. Did I have as MST1? I call it MST1? Yeah, ST1, that's true. If I call MST1, then it should call the Swedish middle because it's on the remote. So what I want to illustrate in this example is as a programmer's perspective, if I can separate the logic about Oh, not this pointer. This is a thing pointer. I make a mistake. Sorry. The the logic of the programmer, it doesn't doesn't really need to know where the thing pointer is really pointing to a remote or really point to a local, because this is just an address to me. It's just an address. I can actually type anything I want. I just call it. And in between virtual function and in between the way I describe the class hierarchy, it will automatically figure out where this object should really be. So let's actually try to compile it. 
I hope it's still compiled. Let me see if I have an error. Okay, I make an error. Unknown type name IP address. What did I do wrong? Okay, IoT IP address. I know what I did wrong because now I include new stuff. So I have to include network H. I have to include um, IoT thing. H. Okay, so now I can compile and then I can run it. And over here, I just run it this way. Okay, you can see that the second one, it was Felix. It was the Swedish Mibble. But where's the first one? It doesn't have the, wait a minute. Did I run the right program? Where's my first one? Oh, you know what? I know exactly what happened. The reason is I put this under shadow sync.cpp. I should actually move it here. You see, I have this program dumped to JSON. I actually have the program to say this line, my V, I should actually, Copy this line and move it here at the end. Every time I call this, I should say result. Okay, now the second one is Felix. The first one was John. Okay, and, and from the programmer perspective, the, the interference about where the locality of the object is, is really um, minimal, close to nothing if you can actually do a run, okay? So I hope you uh, have some uh, first impression about how to write a remote procedure call program. Uh, if you have any, any question before we uh, close. Okay, all right. Uh, I think John is here and I will stay here also for a while. Okay.